my name is Jay Stock. I'm a professor of biological anthropology in the Department of Anthropology at Western. When farmers were migrating into Europe, they migrated in from, from the Near East, and, and when they did, they were bringing crops that weren't very well adapted to the harsher climates of Central and Northern Europe. When they moved into those areas, the, um, they had a hard time establishing crops and used dairy as a fallback food, as a renewable resource. So they were herding cattle, and that milk gave them really the means to survive in an environment that they, they may not have otherwise. That shows that what people do, that the culture that we have and our behavior can influence our genes. Uh, so the, the result of, um, of that shift towards dairying drove selection in gene frequencies, which led to higher frequencies of genes that allow humans to produce enzymes to digest milk into adulthood. Um, but uh, that process also led to humans getting taller and, and having higher body mass associated with that. The geographic trends within Europe show that it uh, evolved in the Bronze Age in Central Europe and, and moved northwards. And that was associated with uh, the difficulties in establishing agriculture in the north. Um, but it also leads, that process of evolution leads to the patterns of um, lactose intolerance that you see in Europe today. So people in the north are much more frequently lactose tolerant and people in the south of Europe are, are more frequently lactose intolerant. But we know there's convergent evolution and that milk drinking um, was not only culturally important in different continents, but we see the evolutionary re result of that, you know, in different continents. There's a, there are high frequencies of lactase persistence genes in Western Africa and down you know, the, the Rift Valley in Eastern Africa and the Horn of Africa. Our data set is based on, largely on European data, but that's just a history of bias in data collection. It's because archeologists have dug a lot more sites within Europe, we have a lot more skeletons, we've had more funded research in, on European skeletons. And so I think the same trends apply within Africa, but we don't really have the data to show that. Farming and herding really developed uh, similarly in, in many places. It just depended on whether there were animals that were, you know, that could be domesticated in that sense. But um, I think where the, you know, the, the big difference with uh, herd animals is whether you use them for, you know, primary products like like meat or the secondary products like like um, milk and cheese and for most cultures they're much more important for secondary products for making things that are renewable and if you think about that we tend to think um, you know in, in North America we tend to think about herd animals being for meat uh, as, as you know our first thought but it's um, they're much more important f as a renewable resource because they can eat uh, plants that we can't eat and digest and turn them into something that's really, you know, nutritious and abundant and renewable and they can do that over and over again. What we can see here is that there are a lot of different outcomes of agriculture in different parts of the world that led to different, different impacts on our health and biology and that there's no um, one simple explanation.